The White House has released a report urging developers to stop writing code in languages like C and C++, saying that these languages are unsafe and that they should be replaced with newer and safer alternatives. The report says that unsafe languages are the ones to blame for facilitating some of the biggest cyber attacks from the 1980s until today. So in this video, we're going to learn what makes a language safe or unsafe, and we're going to understand some ways that C and C++ programs can get hacked. Before we talk about C and C++, we have to learn about a very popular fellow programmers love to work with called the garbage collector. When a program runs in your machine, that program that is usually saved in the hard drive is loaded into the memory of your computer. When the code runs, it is given a space in the memory to store its data. Of course, the memory is not exclusive to one program and it must be shared. It also isn't unlimited. It is a finite resource that developers need to use as efficiently as possible by doing good memory management. The garbage collector helps developers do this automatically by keeping track of the data stored in memory and by removing that data from memory when it stops being used by the program. This means developers don't have to manually write the code to manage the memory of the program and they can instead rely in the garbage collector to allocate memory to keep track of the data in memory and free the memory of unused data automatically for them. Lots of popular languages like Java, Python, C Sharp, Go, JavaScript, and more have garbage collection built in, which means that developers have one less thing to worry about when writing code in those languages. But having a garbage collector is not free, it has a price. Writing code in a garbage collected language is more comfortable, but that comfort is paid for in speed. Using a garbage collector inherently slows down your program because the garbage collector has to run in the background parallel to your program, which is an extra process that also needs memory and resources. A big performance hit is also the garbage collector pause or GC pause. To be able to do its job, the garbage collector has to literally stop the execution of your program to scan the memory for unused objects and get rid of them. Most languages that have a garbage collector have very optimal optimize scanning algorithms that try to make this pause as short as possible, but it's a pause nevertheless. A garbage collector pause in your program is a performance penalty that depending on the project, you may or may not be willing to pay. Discord, for example, was not willing to pay this price. Their read state service, which keeps track of which channels and messages a user has read, was originally written in Go. Most of the time, the service was fast, but every few minutes, it slowed down, which created a bad user experience. In this graph, you can see how every two minutes that were spikes in CPU usage and average response time. The spikes were caused by the Go garbage collector, which as the Discord team found in the source of the Go programming language, is forced to run at least once every two minutes. Discord is just one example of a case when the garbage collector creates a performance problem that is not acceptable. Other cases where you don't want GC pauses can be financial trading systems, where a split second can be the difference between profit and loss. Games are also a place where you don't want the game to lag or stutter because of a GC pause, especially in mission critical software like telecommunications, aerospace, healthcare, defense, robotics, GC pauses are unacceptable, which is where C and C++ shine. Before we talk about C and C++, if you like the way I explain things and you would like to learn to code with me for free, after you finish watching this video, click the link below. There you will find free courses in JavaScript, Python, React, React Native, Go, Dart, Flutter, and Next.js, among many others for free. We have free courses for all levels, from beginners to advanced. So click the link below after the video is done and I will see you there. C and C++ is what the world has used for the past decades to build mission critical software that is as fast as it can possibly be. These languages do not have a garbage collector, which means that there is no middleman between the developer and the memory. So the code is as close to the metal as possible. When developers work with languages that don't have garbage collection, they have to manage the memory manually. They will allocate memory when they need it and they have to deallocate it when it's not being used. If they don't deallocate memory, the the program will just use more and more free memory until there isn't any left, causing a memory leak. Doing manual memory management and not having a garbage collector allows developers to optimize a program as much as possible to make it run faster and more effectively. But with great power comes great responsibility. Doing manual memory management opens your program to a variety of memory safety issues. Memory safety issues happen when the program tries to access memory in a way that it shouldn't, causing the program to crash or behave unexpectedly, which is a no-no for mission critical systems like healthcare, defense, and more. Memory safety issues also make the program vulnerable for hackers to leverage those issues to hack the program or take control of the system. According to Microsoft, 70% of all security bugs are memory safety issues. That is a lot. 70% of all security issues happen because developers make mistakes when managing memory manually. 
crazy. Some people say it is a skill issue from the developer's side, which may be true to a certain extent. But what is also true is that C and C++ are very powerful and do not constrain the developer in any way that will stop them from writing code with memory safety box, which is why they are known to be memory unsafe languages. Languages where writing code that causes a memory safety issue by accident is possible. Sure. C++ has features like smart pointers that help you write safer code, but it's optional to use them and humans aren't perfect. We get lazy, code grows old and messy, and accidents happen. The creator of C++ said that C makes it easy to shoot yourself in the foot, C++ makes it harder, but when you do, it blows your whole leg off. Now I would like to give you a couple of examples of memory safety bugs, show you how they work and how hackers take advantage of them. A buffer overflow is a memory safety issue that happens when the program tries to save data in memory, but the size of the data is bigger than expected, causing it to leak to other parts of the memory. Let's say that you want to save the name of the user and you are expecting this name to be maximum five characters long. So you ask for a buffer or a space in memory that can hold five characters. If a user gives you a name that is five characters or less, everything will be fine. But if a user gives you a name that is 10 characters and you don't check the length of the name, when you write to memory, the name will overflow the buffer, like water overflowing a glass. The extra five characters will spill over to neighboring memory locations, potentially overwriting the data stored there, corrupting memory and maybe crashing the program. The way that a hacker can take advantage of this is by finding out what is stored next to that buffer. If next to the buffer there is sensitive data, like an account balance for example, an attacker can use a controlled buffer overflow to increase their account balance by overwriting the memory that holds it. Or if the region next to the buffer holds the address of a function the program will call later, the attacker can replace that address and point the program to run a function created by the attacker, effectively making the program run arbitrary code. Another example of a memory safety issue is the use after free vulnerability. Use after free happens when a program program tries to access a part in memory that has already been freed. Let's say you have a program that allocates memory to store the name of the user. And let's say that you have a hello function that reads the name of the user from memory, greets the user, and then frees the memory to save resources. If you forget that you freed that memory, for example, and you later make a bye-bye function that tries to read the name of the user from memory again, because that memory is free, you will have a problem since you are reading from a region of memory that was freed long time ago. The program will either crash or you may be reading other data that is now in that location. If an attacker can figure out that you are using after free, they can strategically place their own data in the memory region the hello function frees and the bye bye function reads. So the bye bye function may execute arbitrary code put there by the attacker which can lead to unauthorized access, data manipulation or even the injection of malicious payloads. The way of getting rid of memory safety issues, says the report, is to stop writing code in memory unsafe languages and move to memory safe languages instead. Languages where the language itself does not allow you to write memory unsafe code by accident. Most mainstream programming languages with garbage collectors like C Sharp, Go, Java, Python, JavaScript and more can be considered memory safe, since the developer is not dealing with memory at all. And for cases when you have a need for speed and can't use a garbage collector but still want to write memory safe code, languages like Ada and Rust are recommended as a safe choice rather than C and C++. Those languages don't have a garbage collector, which means that memory management is done manually, but they have features that make writing memory unsafe code by accident virtually impossible. Rust has an ownership system enforced by the compiler that eliminates memory safety issues that I think is really cool. I made a video a while ago in Rust, so check it out if you want to. This does not mean that Rust is going to replace C and C++. The world runs in C and C++, and no one wants to spend the money required to rewrite everything in Ada or Rust. I think C and C++ will slowly lose popularity to Rust, and maybe in 20 or 30 years, the world will be running in more software written in Rust than in C and C++. Microsoft is already rewriting core Windows libraries in Rust, and Rust is making its way into the Linux kernel slowly but surely. This does not mean that it's impossible to write insecure programs in a safe language. Developers can make mistakes in other areas that make the program vulnerable, so there will always be hacks and hackers. But by using memory safe languages, the attack surface becomes smaller. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like it, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. Your subscription means a lot to me. It motivates me in doing research and creating quality content every week. So please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you for watching as always. Onjuna, Kamsahago, Sana Hamida. See you on the next one. Down by bye bye.